When I first saw it, it was covered in concrete, rusted, it had asphalt on it. Some was very, very bent, some was a little bit bent, uh, some was pretty straight. And it was a question of figuring out what I could actually get out of it that would work. We realized we didn't really have enough straight material. So about six of the pieces, the half come half V's, uh, had to be spliced with other straight sections and ground down to match. The material was actually softer than we thought it would be. We expect it to be much harder than it was, particularly because it's compressed from the trolley. It's part of the history, and the history is what the piece is about. The track was fabricated in uh, Baltimore back in the 1890s, and there were two or three different heights that they used. So when you start joining the V's, one's a little higher, a little bit lower, which required grinding it down to get them to match. There are only two actual parts in it. There's a left side of a V and a right side of a V, and everything is cut all at once. It maybe took two, three minutes to make each cut. But once all the pieces are cut, then the Vs are actually assembled, which takes much less time than any of the other processes. And at that point, we are dealing with two pieces that weigh about 160 pounds a piece. The parts are identical. It's the fact that they're separated as they move that creates that movement, creates the arc, creates the overall shape. While the piece curves and is asymmetrical, it's actually assembled with the first V lying on the ground and stacked up similar to a um, spiral staircase. Worked with a string bob, basically a plumb bob, to make sure that that one point is uh, dead on and then and it's not where you would think it would be. It's right out at the edge of the point. All of it was welded all the way up. If you look at the piece, you'll see there's a three inch weld every three inches. About four weeks to actually put the whole thing together. What we did was go to a um, truck painter and they have a colossal spray booth. There were six gallons of primer, three gallons of the intermediate coat, and then three gallons, just under three gallons of the finished coat. The primer uh, is very zinc rich. When it dries, it's about 85% zinc. And then the intermediate coat is polyurethane. It's not epoxy, and it sets up pretty quickly, in fact. And then the finished coat is mixed with a hardener at a ratio of four to one. And the painting is a essentially two day long process. Because it's in a neighborhood, I wanted some bright and cheerful. Kids are gonna go buy it, families are gonna go buy it. Um, I didn't want something crude and industrial. Positioning it is tricky because again, it's a little off center in terms of weight, but you have to stay within the limits on the piece. You have, um, it basically it was about an inch and a half off. And what we had to do is go back and forth until we essentially found the closest to center on all three pads that we would get. People tend to think that all artists make everything themselves, beginning to end. The truth is most large-scale public works are done by fabricators. To a large extent, if you're doing large work, one artist can't do it. It's physically impossible. So it's a lot of management. It's almost like being a project manager. And it's a lot of making sure everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. And that's part of my job. <laughs>